Thank you all for joining the CAFE webinar today. Hope you all have been doing well. Today, I will be sharing with you seven insider secrets for mastering CAFE. Now, I hope not all of these are actually secrets, but I hope they're helpful tips that you may not have known um, or that could be helpful in your call for entry process. Okay, so the key items that we will cover include copying info from a previous call, promoting your call using information from CAFE and our eBlast service, building a better application, and options for organizing the entries and options for your jurors to organize their scores. First insider secret we have for you today is for those of you who run the same kind of call on a regular basis. We know many of you have calls that don't change much year to year, and some of you have calls that repeat month to month. Since we know copying a lot of the same information each year or month can be tedious, we now offer an option on the new call request form where you can let us know if you'd like us to copy over the details of a previous call. So here we have the client information form for contest. Um, we're on the third page here after the billing information. Once you reach this third page for, your, page for your call details, you will see under the call name section right here, you'll see the option to um, copy over, have the team copy over the application details from an existing call and cafe. If you click yes, you, all you have to do is enter the name of the call that you want to copy the details from. And when we create your new call, we will simply copy that call template from before um, and things such as your short description, your long description, um, some of those like extra fields of your organization information and contact info, um, those will all copy over. Same goes with your application custom questions, any of the application form that you built out, those will all be copied over to your new call. Um, all you'll need to go to do is go in and update any of the dates within those text um, areas or update the deadline date to the new, um, the new dates in the new year. We'll still ask you to fill out the rest of these details on this call form, and that's simply to let us know and make sure that everything is accurate um, to what you want it to be for this next call. And then we'll still ask that you verify these are all correct when we enter in CAFE. Please note that this stage of the call um, info form is the only stage that we can copy over details, so make sure you let us know here that you want to copy them over. We can't do it retroactively. But we hope this is a helpful tip to streamline your process. Just adding this question here. Our next insider secret is to retrieve your call's unique URL before your call goes live. So let's say you're working on your call information at the same time you or your marketing department is getting ready to promote your call. One of the important things you need to promote your call is the URL that will direct artists to CAFE so they can apply. So we'll go to the call and we're going to find the call URL within the call editor and it's going to be on the event information tab like we're on here and the call URL will be found on this tab um, just above the front end status so you'll see the setting for the call URL right here. So let's say you just started working on your call, you've entered your information, you won't actually see the URL here yet, and that's because your front end status is disabled. Once you set your front end status to active, however, and you click save, we'll go back to that tab, and then you can see the call URL is populated. You can then use this URL for anything. You can put it on your website, you could put it in social media posts, send it to your networks. Um, this is the URL that will direct you to your call. And let's say maybe you want to take this URL, but you're not ready to go live yet. Um, this might be when you want to use the URL to promote and build any hype for your call that's about to open, but you don't actually want to take it live yet. And to answer the question in the chat, does active make the call live? It depends, which we'll go over in a second here. So there are two ways to do this. The first is to take the call live by setting the front end status to active. And then as long as your accept application state, this is where it depends whether or not it's live. If your accept application state is in the current day or in the past, this means that your call will then be live. So right now, since we have it to yesterday's date, 
our call here is live because it's active. So let's say you need to just grab that URL real quick. You take it live, you can copy and paste this URL, and then just set it right back to disabled. And then you know for sure that your call is disabled and not live yet. Let's say though that you want to take it live on a specific date and you want to be able to use that URL. Well, this is how you can do that. You can take your front end status to active, but then set your accept applications date here to any date in the future, let's say next Friday. So I'll set that there, I'll make sure my status is active, and then I will click save. Now, here is where my front end status is active, but my call is not yet live because my accept applications date is not until next week. So you could leave if your um, call information is ready to go, but you're waiting until you build up enough hype, then you can use this method to retrieve your call URL. Um, you can see here that the call URL, if I go to it, and it will open a new tab, this is where the URL will take the users who, you know, wherever you put your URL, it will be, it'll direct them to this page. And this is your call details page. This is all the details that you've entered into your long description. You can see here that um, even though the call is not live, you can still access this call details page. Um, it'll still show all the information. So this will be helpful if you want to kind of give folks a preview of what the call will entail, but you're not ready to accept applications yet. Maybe you're still building out your application form. But let's say when you are ready to go live, and let's just for that sake, let's put it to yesterday's date again. Let's actually take the call live. If I refresh the call details page, you'll then see that the apply now button is now available. And so any folks that go to the call URL can now actually apply from here. So that's a handy way to retrieve the call URL before taking your call live. So we think it's pretty, pretty nifty to be able to do that. And your call URL will always be the same for each call. It's just that call ID number, which is up here at the top. Um, this is an ID number that is assigned to the call when we create it. Normally you don't have to worry about it, but just to let you know that's how this call URL is populated. It's just with your call ID. Another tip that we have that usually goes unnoticed is the informational only question type that you can add to your list of questions on your application. The informational only type allows you to enter instruction or informational only text that does not require an answer from the applicant. This is good for giving additional information about your call or to set up reasons for why you are collecting certain pieces of information from them. Some also use this to include info directly above the media requirements on the application itself um, where they can reiterate what is required from their work samples before the applicant reaches that section. So to set up one of these question types, you'll go to the application editor tab of the call editor. And under the list of question application custom questions, which we have right here, um, you'll enter the um, new question under this blank line. So you'll enter an internal title, address verification, which is what we'll talk about today in our example. And the priority type will be informational only. Um, you won't have to choose from any of the options because that is um, only for questions that need answer questions or, or answer um, text, so check boxes or radio buttons, you need a certain number of options. You can hide it from the jurors if you like. To create this question, you'll make sure to click build new question and go to the cafe question editor. You'll see our title is here. And you'll see that this looks like any other question, but this one only has two text boxes, one for the initial question, which is that information that you'll actually show um, enter onto the application, and the second text box, which will include, um, if you choose to include any information, this will show up as a help bubble on the application. So typically you don't really need to use this unless you have some additional help info. So you'll see that there are no extra options or anything. Um, all you'll need to do is enter information in the text box and we'll, it will show up on um, the application as actual plain text. 
And then here, the priority, which means the order that the question will appear on the application. This is actually important for informational only questions because you may want to um, include this information at certain order at a certain order with your other questions. So for our example here, let's just say that I want to add text to make sure artists have checked that their information is updated in their profile. Let's say my call is restricted to Colorado artists only, and I plan to verify that information using their mailing address. Since the artist profile, which includes their address and contact info that you see on their submitted application, is separate from the application form, I want to prompt the artist to verify that their profile information is correct. So I'll enter the information into this text box. Let's just say, I say, please verify your cafe profile is up oops, to date with your current mailing address. So you can add more information. I'm just going to keep it simple for our example here. And then I'll make sure my priority is set to one because I want it to be at the top. And then I'll click create question. And then you can see that it's up here at the top address verification informational only. On the preview, which we'll go to by clicking on preview application questions, this will open a new tab with the application as it will appear to the artist. Um, you'll see here that this is the information we just included is up the top above the next questions. It will be below the artist statement since the artist statement is a separate section of the application. You've included this info here. so. As you can see, this text doesn't necessarily stand out. Um, so what you could do is go back and click edit and you can bold it. You can't change the size or anything, but you can bold it, which will help. And, or you can put it in all caps or something, um, anything that will draw attention to it. So we can just do that. And this will be helpful if you need to add information above this work sample sections, you can put it at the bottom of the list that says, before you move on to the work sample sections, make sure that you have um, a minimum of you know, X amount of images and that they're labeled correctly, things like that. Um, another thing you could do too is enter hyperlinks into the text. Um, that might be helpful to direct artists to additional resources you may want to give them as they're applying. I know some folks might use this to direct the artist to their website to ensure that they've you know, read the agreement or something. So um, you can add any hyperlinks by clicking the link button and enter a URL. There's little things like that that you can do in this um, to, be, to make your application a little bit more um, interactive. And I think that since we're all aware that artists don't necessarily read all of the requirements of the call details page, you can use this tool to make sure that you've gotten the information that is required in front of the app artist as they're applying. All right, so one of the benefits of hosting your call in CAFE is the exposure you will have to hundreds of thousands of artists that use CAFE all over the country, and some internationally. Once your call is set up and live, um, you'll want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to reach as many of those artists as possible. While I hope this one isn't so much a secret, our next tip is to take advantage of the CAFE promotional ad eblast, which I will show you on our page here. This is an add-on service we provide for any of your calls that are active on CAFE. For a low cost, you can pick the geographic regions and the artistic disciplines of artists you'd like to reach and we will send an email with your call details and your organization information. So I'll show you an example of an eblast that we have here. It will include your logo, your call details, and the short description of your call, which can be personalized if you choose. You don't have to use have to have us use your short description. You can send us additional messaging that you want to include into your eblast. Like I mentioned, um, Oh, before, yeah, we also list the organization information as well down at the bottom with the apply now button to take artists to the application. Yeah, like I mentioned, you can choose which artists to send your email to, and you can also choose which artistic disciplines to send it to. So, for example, we have 32 disciplines that range from drawing and painting to folk art to community arts, public art, sculpture, things like that. 
Um, the price of the eblast will then depend on how many artists are chosen by your criteria. So if you choose um, painters in Colorado, that will have a different price than painters, drawers, illustrators in the whole US. So um, the pricing is all found on the information page here. These are the different pricing tiers determined by your audience size, up to 10,000 emails and so forth. So to request an eblast, all you need to do is go to reserve my eblast. You can um, send us an info. This is also on the help center. The eblast information is on our help center. If you go to the help tab of your cafe um, login, and you just fill out this eblast reservation form and notify us of your budget and your ideal target audience. We will then reach out with different pricing options based on your selection. And we'll work with you to create that email that we'll send out. Many organizations have said this eblast has helped increase the number of submissions, so it's a good option for making sure artists see your call. Our next insider secret. Next up, we have a tip that will help you stay organized as you manage the application submitted to your call. Let's say you need to look into the eligibility of an artist, or an artist came to you and said they need to make a change on their application. In order to keep track of these cases, you can add internal comments to the application. So I'm going to start in our events management tab, and I'll make sure the call is chosen. You'll see the applications by status box here. For this case, I'll click on the status received. Or you can also search for a specific application using the name, application ID, category, or anything like that. Once the list of applications loads into this table here, um, you can find the application that you need. And you'll see under the notes column the option, option to add comments. So if you need to add a comment to an application, you just click add comment. You'll be taken to a pop-up window or a new tab here and where you say that um, you can add your comment here. So say they need to possibly make a change. So I can then click edit to save this comment. It will close, it will then refresh on this side and you'll see the preview of the comment here. And then of course you can just click on that comment again to see the full text. We have about 250 characters allowed on this comment, so that's about 40 or 50 words or three to four sentences. So it can be a little bit longer, but just keep it, keep it brief so you don't have anything cut off. And then another thing you can do to draw your attention to that comment is flag the, comp the application. So you can click on the flag icon here. This will help you keep track of any applications that you know need to be um, referred back to. So just note that any of the comments or flags, they won't be visible to the artists and they won't be visible to the jury. So you can um, rest assured that you can make any of these comments that you need to, that you won't actually be um, communicating that message to the artist. If you decide you need to tag an application, which you can see here, we've got some tags. You can go to the ID number to go to the artist citation and you can edit or add your tag here. And then just note that the tags, while they will also not be seen by the artist, this will actually be seen by the jury on the scorecard. So it's one way to tag an application for the jurors. All right, so um, that is that tip. Using the comments, notes, um, tagging, flagging. Um, those are just ways that um, you can organize these entries and just keep track of things that are coming to mind. So our next secret, hopefully not so secret, um, is emailing individual artists through CAFE. While you all know that you can email artists from um, each status by going to the events communication page and clicking on the um, status of the folks you want to email, you can also email individual artists. To do so, we're going to go back to events management We'll click on the receive status or we'll find the application in our search box. And then um, we'll go to an artist. So let's just say maybe an artist is missing information 
um, before the jury that you need to clear up or you need to notify them maybe they had to you had to withdraw their application and you need to tell them why let's say they're ineligible or something so you can just go to the application ID number click on that for the artist you'll be taken to their artist citation page then you just have to locate the email which is just at the top and then click the email and then the uh, email or form will load for this artist then you just have to enter in the information, the subject, body, everything is normal. Make sure you do include your uh, reply to email address. This will be preloaded with your email that you have on your CAFE account, um, but let's say you need to change that for whatever reason, you can just change it there. And you can also send yourself a copy. Then just click preview email. You'll see the preview of it. I didn't add anything, so obviously it's um, small here. And then you'll just click send to send it. And then if you're ready, um, when you want to see the email copy, oh, we can go back to the artist citation page. And a copy of the email will be um, in the communication section. So under emails, it will list all of the emails you've ever sent to that artist, whether it was to the entire status or just individually. Those all, all of those emails will be here. So this is helpful if you need to email an individual artist, um, you can just do that right through CAFE. Okay, so our final insider secret is actually one for our jurors. So I'm going to log in as a juror next. Okay. Go to our jury tab. Okay. So as a juror, after you go through the scores and entries, um, there's going to be a way for you to take a look at your scores and make sure that everything is as you want them to be. So we'll choose our call here. And I'm going to click on the total number of applications. You can also do this by category, but I'll just choose total. It will open the scorecard here, but I'm just going to close that since I've already scored everything. And you'll see this table of the entries and the scores that I gave them. Our tip here, um, so obviously most of you probably aren't during your, your entries, but you may be, or you might want to pass this tip on to your jurors. Um, you can actually filter this table by score. So you can see this option here, and you can choose whichever score. If you're set to score by yes, no, or maybe, you'll see those options, um, but you can click on any of the scores to see which entries were scored that way. This could be handy for a couple of different reasons. First, let's say the juror knows they need to narrow down the entries significantly. So it's important not to score too many entries with a high number. They can use this tool to make sure they are distributing the scores the way, um, in a way that will help narrow down the selections. Another reason could be that they wanna go back and look at the entries by score to double check their decisions. They could look at the entry score to six, for example, as we have here, and see if they want to raise or lower the score. To review, all they have to do is click review from the action column of this table. Once they click that, they'll be taken to that specific scorecard. Then they can update their score if needed, and when they're ready, click save my score. They'll then be taken to the next um, work sample in the batch, but you can just close the window to go back and you'll see that the entry was removed from this page here since it's now under score five right here. I'll also mention that you can filter by score and then further sort this table to reorder the entries. For example, if you have categories enabled for the call, your drawer can then click on the category column to sort by categories. And they can also um, see the distribution easier. They can also separate this out um, by clicking on the number of scored entries. Let's say under the digital art column, looks like there's 10 that were in here. You'll tend just ignore the scorecards that pop up. Um, but then you can see how many are in the digital art category with a score of five or anything else, but as long as you clicked on that total digital art, you'll only see the digital art entries. And 
that's just a couple of different ways to do that, but with all of these sorting and filters, it's just an easier way to preview um, what those final selections might be and to see if there's anything that needs to be updated or changed based off the score. You can just go back to all to see all the scores. You can also click on the score heading to sort ascending or descending of those scores. And then this concludes our webinar for our Insider Secrets. I hope you learned some new tips and tricks that make you feel like you can master CAFE. Okay, Matt, question. Can you go over the tag feature again, how people use it? Of course. Tags are um, easy to see. Um, they kind of help to organize the um, entries further. So you can organize them by category if you have the... Um, entries if you have the artists sort by category um, but tags might also help if you need to kind of group things together um, they can also be useful if you need to communicate to the juror like mm, let's say one of these entries is from the president of the org of the organization and they're you know they need to be scored but they're not exempt you know something like that um, basically to go these are these are existing tags we have an, a tag that's named tag here, um, but to add a tag on one that doesn't have one, you'll just go to the artist citation page. This will take you to the application, and let's, on the bottom here, you can then create the tag, and it's only 12 characters, so it's supposed to be something pretty small. Here you can see that in the past I've used artist um, A, B, C alph alphabetically, so um, we had an instance where the juror needed to to differentiate that the artist, the artwork was made by the same artist, but the artist names were hidden. So the tags were useful because we could, um, you know, sort them saying that artist A, these entries are all from artist A, but that also would hide the name. So that's how we use the tags there. But let's say we had the organization president submit an entry and we just want the jurors to know that. <laughs> so we can click save and that'll be tagged as, as that. And then we can just remove it if we need to from here. Um, let's go to the, oh, I might've done it for, I'll show you where this shows up on the jury side. Um, I'm gonna tag a new one here. Let's just tag this one as president. There's other ways that this can be useful. I don't know all of the different ways, but um, there are other, um, ways that I'm sure you can come up with. So I'll just go real quickly and show you under some of the tags. I forgot the name of that one. Oh, it was Cafe Admin. Okay, you can see the tag here is present. Or if you go to the entry, oops. You go to the scorecard you can see the tag there we go so this is just another way to communicate with the jurors if you need to or just for yourself i hope that was helpful <laughs> thanks <laughs> all right sounds like we're done with questions so i will um dismiss the meeting thank you for joining us and be sure to join our next webinar next month